Welcome back to the Cube's coverage of Mobile World Congress 2021. We're here in person and remote. This is a physical and virtual. It's a hybrid event and the Cube's got wall to wall coverage. I'm Sean Furrier, your host of the Cube. We've got a great guest here, Adolfo Hernandez, Vice President, Global Telco Business Unit for Amazon Web Services, AWS. Adolfo, thank you for coming on remotely for this virtual hybrid Mobile World Congress. Thanks, thanks for having me, John, exciting. The, uh, you know, you have an impressive background in telecom industry and um, over the years, the technology industry has been great innovation. We've seen, I mean, how many G's have been, we've gone through, but I remember the days when Wi-Fi wasn't even around. So you, you, know, you got a complete change in the past couple of decades. This year, more than ever with the pandemic, you know, coming through this, you're starting to see some clear visibility on the trends. And also this is the first Mobile World Congress in person since 2019. So a lot has changed. What is your view on the marketplace and what is your message you're telling the telecom industry from Amazon? In your perspective, what do you see? Yeah, you, you're absolutely right, John. This is a fascinating time to be, uh, to be on the cloud, to be at Mobile World Congress. I remember Mobile World Congress 2020 was the first event that actually got canceled. So that was the beginning of, uh, of the pandemic. And now here we are, right, a year and a bit later, working with the leading telecommunications operators, with the leading telecommunications ISVs and solution providers. And what a better place that been doing that with um, AWS and this very transformational time in this space. Uh, we are supporting telecom operators uh, around the world as they reinvent communications in many different ways. And she said, this is not just one more G, right? We, we are definitely transforming the industry. Like any industry, right? We see telecom operators having to, to, to get simplification on their operations and transforming the IT side of the house. So they've got the internal IT that, that needs a big transformation. They also got the network IT, everything related with OSS and BSS, and they need to migrate that to the cloud. And we've got a lot of experience, right? Doing that with telcos uh, around the world to really help them accelerate that journey to, to the cloud. And we can help them with data center consolidation, migrations, and, and, and a number of things. So we've got examples like GigGaf, uh, which is one of the uh, largest uh, MVNOs. Uh, I'm one of the first ones in Europe to go all in on the AWS cloud, and they move all the data to the, and, and the heart of the business there. So once you're sort of dealing with the network, the, the IT transformation, then you've got to go and look at how do you reinvent and accelerate the delivery of 5G connectivity? Well, that's, that's uh, very current uh, uh, as we're doing now. And we really want to help them because when they, they accelerate to the cloud, they get more flexibility, they get more agility, they get more cost effectiveness. And if you think about how traditional telco networks were built, where you have to provision a lot of systems, you have to provision a lot of on the, on, on the base stations, and then you needed to provision a lot of systems on the cloud, on, 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 on the RAM side, and then you needed to put aggregation centers, traffic centers, and then you would have the headquarters and then you would have all the network functions, right? Going from, from, from the radio all the way to the center. All of these systems needed to be provisioned for peak capacity, right? This sort of famous Mother's Day moment. As you move to the cloud, right? You can provision on the different parts of the cloud. You can provision on the AWS outpost. You can provision on, on, on local zone. You can provision on, on, on the regions and you leverage right away uh, the experience that, that, that we've got and all of our infrastructure, reducing cost, getting, getting a lot of flexibility and being able to embark uh, just and consume what you need. And you know, an example of that, it's been uh, Telefonica Vivo in Brazil. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago and they've accelerated their move by deploying a 5G standalone uh, cloud native platform. And that gives them a lot of automation capabilities and give them faster CI, CD, CD. So really cool stuff that you couldn't do in the old ways of building networks. It's interesting, Third you mentioned, one you mentioned is, CI, CD pipeline and developers. To me, that's what comes to my mind when I think of AWS, the enablement of developers, now the enterprise. Now you got the telco cloud and Amazon's not known for being a 5G player, but you guys are enabling a lot of 5G. Could you address that uh, question? How is Amazon Web Services enabling 5G? What's, that, what's, your, what's your answer to that? So, so first of all, I think I'd like to say that, you know, 5G is an absolutely great example that this is a lot about 
moving to the cloud. 5G is cloud native, uh, it's cloud friendly. You can virtualize pretty much every function. You can separate every function uh, from the hardware and the software and move everything to the cloud. And that is really lending itself to move to a cloud delivery model. As we were talking about um, earlier, we, we are enabling people to go and take the AWS infrastructure, uh, like AWS Outpost, and bring in all the AWS infrastructure, all the services, all the APIs, and all the tools that you have on AWS virtually to any single location. And that allows you to really deploy things like thousands of cell sites across a run. You couldn't do that before. On the AWS local zones, right? You, you can take everything there, compute, storage, databases, and a lot of different services. And those are perfect for large metro areas where you need to do a lot of network traffic aggregation. And, and, and this makes them really good to deploying parts of the network core. Again, that's, that's another innovation. And then you can look at then the regions and the regions have all everything that you need from a compute storage and services perspective. And that those are really well suited for BSS, for OSS, to keeping the network running and to do all, all of that. And, and, and you can do that today, leveraging existing infrastructure that you don't have to acquire, that you don't have to provision, that you don't have to provision for the peak capacity and that you don't have to install and manage. And I think that's a, that's a serious breakthrough for the industry. Okay, so let me just capture that because I, I heard a bunch of things that I really like, cloud native 5G. What does cloud native 5G mean for the telco industry specifically? Well, I think that if, if, I, if I had to put it down to one thing, it, it's just about making it really easy to roll out. It's just about being able to deploy easily, to automate easily. So you can free up investment and you can free up resources and you can free up overhead. You, you can really start taking advantages of all that flexibility and scalability and automation that you get with the cloud and you apply that to a network. And that is the very first time we're able to do that in wireless. Yeah. And it's just going to give you um, a lot of a, a lot of advantages. Look at DISH, right? We made this, this announcement uh, with DISH that they're moving with one of the industry first cloud 5G cloud native uh, um, networks out there. Look at the example I talked about earlier, Telefonica Viva doing that 5G standalone um, solution. So you, you're going to be seeing, this is just the beginning, but this is going to be not the end because there's a lot of interest in getting these benefits. I saw the uh, Dave Brown uh, um, uh, announcement with DISH uh, a while back, just recently. So I want to ask you, this. Graviton processors play a role in the dish deal. Do you mind answering that? If you comment on that? Yeah, I think you might remember uh, Dave Brown being very proud of uh, everything that Graviton 2 processors can do in terms of uh, increasing the price performance, uh, helping telco operators, not only with the price performance factor, but also with the energy uh, equation. So it's just really, really exciting uh, to have that differentiation and being able to deliver that innovation and that value to telco operators in a cloud native 5G network. I got to ask you about some of the open source and cloud scale things coming together. That's a big trend I'm seeing here at Mobile World Congress, openness, multi-vendor, scaling up quickly, provisioning stuff fast and easy, leveraging existing technologies, and of course, developer friendly. So with that, yeah. I got to ask you, what's all the, uh, the, the, the big deal about with this open RAN? Um, you know, obviously radios are key and wireless. What is open RAN? mean? Can you take us through what's the yeah. importance of this? Well, yeah, Open Rank is an industry-wide or mostly industry-wide initiative to look at effectively trying to apply some of these, some of these uh, open and, 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 and uh, sharing uh, models to, to the run. And as you've got uh, vendors and you've got telco operators participating. But what we do, and you, you know as well, John, because you've been working with AWS for a while, you know that we're very customer focused, right? And 90% of what we do is, is what we hear that they're trying to, to, to solve because the things that matter to them. So when we engage with them, when we engage with somebody like Dish and, and they tell us that they're interested in Open Run, we will go and partner uh, with, with the right partners who can provide the right solution to deliver on that, that Open Run. And, and you've seen we sign agreements with uh, the likes of Nokia to, to do research and, and solutions on Cloud RAN. You also saw a couple of weeks ago, we uh, did another uh, collaboration announcement with uh, Mavenir 
to deliver not only Cloud Run, right, but a set of, of uh, 5G uh, solutions like IMS, the 4G, uh, 5G converged packet core, messaging and others. So, so we are engaging with the complete ecosystem on our, on our customers' behalf to deliver whatever they're after. And open rank is one of these topics, and and that and we are delivering to to uh, um, operators like Dish and others in the market. Do you think that this new shift of the cloud is going to increase the surface area? Because that, to me, is the big theme I'm seeing with this new shift as we look at even telco cloud and the edge. It's the classic surface area, and this is well known in the security world that there's no there's no perimeter anymore. The surface area for security is everywhere, so things have changed. But telco just seems like the edge is expanding. You got satellite, you got space, you got more, more 5G, more commercial, so much more surface area. What's the impact going to be to the industry and to, and to applications? Well, I, th I think what we're seeing is 5G comes out there because there is a, a need for, for more data, more bandwidth, uh, obviously increased security, new standards, but there is also about latency right, uh, latency reduction. And, and I think that's really going to change the paradigm as we inject this increased uh, responsiveness, this low latency closer to the edge. And we bring the applications and we bring the computer and we bring the storage as we do with Wavelength right through to the edge as we're doing with uh, Verizon, Vodafone, uh, KDDI, SK Telecom and operators around the world. This is going to enable a number of transformational uh, use cases for society, whether they are in, uh, in in virtual reality, whether they are with the autonomous driving, whether it's about automating uh, and getting more intelligence into manufacturing processes. There is just so much potential to transform society. And it all comes back with this sort of new 5G and some of the things that, that enables like, like moving uh, closer to the edge. So as I said, really interesting times. Adolfo Hernandez, Vice President of Global Telco Business with Amazon Web Service. Thanks for the great insight here on theCUBE for our Mobile World Congress coverage. Really, really great insight. Thanks so much. Thanks, John. Delighted to be here. If you don't mind, I'd like to just quickly shift gears to something while, while I got you here on the, on the industry. Um, Adolfo, you're very well known in the industry for someone who's, who knows how to turn things around. You've done that in the past. You've been part of um, growth companies. You've been part of uh, companies that have refocused. Um, telco has been a big, big changeover. People are looking at this new opportunity as a growth opportunity. And people are looking at div divesting some non-critical divisions and looking at acquisitions. I mean, the private equity is on fire right now. And you're starting to see a lot more formation because there's more visibility into, into territory to take. There's more opportunities to be had. So there's more potential revenue than there is you can do on the cost cutting side. So yeah, everyone I talk to uh, who's been in the industry has got their eyes are really popping out of their head. They're saying there's more opportunities if we can reconfigure our resources, take advantage of cloud. You're an expert in this area. For the folks out there who are in the boardrooms, you know, cranking away, thinking through how to organize for the cloud scale, what would be your advice to those teams? Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, insight to be had from, from the experience that um, at AWS we've gained through the years, right? And doing this at IT. Do you definitely have to get uh, a top down vision, right? So it's really got to start at the C suite. This moving to the cloud for what it brings, right? The faster, faster pace of innovation, the cost reduction, the agility, right? And, and that's, you've got to be thinking about going to the cloud top down. Then the next thing you've got to go and say, okay, what are the, 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 the parts of my operation that I can go after um, uh, with cloud? Where do I start? Do I start with uh, the IT applications? Do I start with, uh, with some new go-to-market initiatives? Do I start by infusing some machine learning capabilities into existing operations? Do I start by building uh, data lakes that I can go and monetize or I can go and, and use to generate um, best of customer service, or I can go and fundamentally transform my networks. Not every telco is going to start in a different place, but I would say is you've got to start looking at that agility, that faster innovation, that better use of resources that cloud brings to telco for the very first time in a long time, in, in decades. And, and then if you're going to do that, I, I would strongly recommend people to, to talk to to the uh, uh, the provider that's got the capabilities, the 
broadest set of services, the deepest set of services, and, and, and the most uh, relevant experience to do that. Because we've been doing that in IT, and we've been working on telcos now for five plus years, and we've got pretty much every relationship. And as you know, John, this is really important. Uh, in telco, you depend uh, on collaborations, on ISVs and software vendors, and every vendor out there, every software company out there will develop uh, um, certainly on, on AWS. So we'll be delighted to engage with them and, and help them move forward. Yeah, and Andy Jassy, the CEO of AWS last year at reInvent, really kind of made that the hallmark of his keynote around get those teams together, the executives top down, be a builder, think like a builder. Uh, McKinsey just put out a report, trillion dollar opportunities that, that no one sees yet that's coming. So a lot of emphasis on revenue, new revenue opportunities are coming. And certainly this has been something that Telco has been looking for for a long time. So great opportunity. Um, and thank you for sharing your insight. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage of ABS Mobile World Congress 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.